in the basement, folks, and guess what? It's leaking. Not something that we want whatsoever, especially a homeowner. What causes it? First of all, high water tables. Secondly, a lot of rain building up on the hard pan around the home, poor drainage system. And thirdly, maybe a severe winter with a lot of snow and now the snow melting. But look at here. This homeowner here has got a problem. Not only a problem with leaks, but the real quality of concrete work here has really something to be desired. But let's take a look here. Where the water is leaking, the hydraulics building up in behind the wall, they've tried a method using a urethane patch. And that urethane patch has only been put where obviously the wet mark was at the time that they put the patch in place. And you can see the water's bubbling in behind and ultimately will work to the outside and run down onto the floor. In fact, the floor is wet there right now. Now, the poor quality of this wall, look at the coal joint here. Now, that's this poor placement of concrete in the forms. In fact, the, uh, the form ties here and here haven't been chipped out and filled with a hydraulic cement. Now, some builders will use an outside membrane system, which is very good as well. But in this particular case, it obviously hasn't been used. Now, down here, where they've tried to repair this wall by another method, using the coving method, and that's using hydraulic cement. Now, hydraulic cement built uh, up against the wall, out on the floor, coving it, hoping that that's going to stop that hydraulic pressure from pushing water in. Well, as you can see, it didn't work. The water actually come up the wall and it's coming in a cold joint. A real mess. So water leak, leak, leak. You never can control it. And I thought, for this homeowner, I'm going to go and talk to the basement systems people and find out just how they'll go about doing the repair. Larry from Basement Systems. How are you doing, Larry? Real good, Shell. Hey, now, this is uh, quite an interesting problem here. we got water coming in a lot of different areas. How are you going to help me? Well, uh, first of all, every problem is a little bit different. So we customize the solution based on what the homeowner wants and what the physical problems are. So in this particular case here where there's water perking up around the floor and wall in the cracked areas up the corners and also the honeycomb, you've got a system that will do all that. Absolutely. And the one we're going to use today is called WaterGuard. It's a specially designed piping system. Wow, that's interesting. It's engineered specifically for basement waterproofing. Now, what, tell me, what's all this business at the back? Well, this is going to go underneath the floor at the perimeter, and these spacers here create a space between the wall and the floor when it's finished so that any incident, incidental seepage that comes through the wall will go down into the system. And on into the perforations in the bottom, which goes up against the, the actual wall where it meets the footing. Right. The system sits on top of the footing as opposed to underneath the floor in the soil where uh, it will never clog. The system will never clog from silt and sediment washing into it. The process begins by removing the perimeter of the floor and developing a trench where we can access the top of the footing to install the water guard. So then it's uh, placed in the floor. Let's right. have that put down into the floor. Right. And then over top of which, uh, what do you do from there? Well, we're going to backfill it with uh, some clean stone. And uh, then we're going to reconcrete the floor flush so that all you'll see is a little lip sticking up above the floor. Now the gravel that's being put in there now, that acts as a, uh, obviously a drainage rock as well as uh, a backer for the, the cement fill? Right, it just uh, fills that space in between the original floor and the water guard itself. And then where does that all lead to? Well, it takes all the water from the footing wall joint, from the walls and from underneath the floor and drains it all around to a sump. Well, Larry, I see you got the sump pit put into the ground. Uh, tell me about it. Right. This is our super sump, and we have the sump that goes underneath the floor and it has holes in it to drain water direct from underneath the floor. And then we've run a pipe from our water guard to the sump to drain all the water guard from the perimeter through the water guard system and into the sump. So there's virtually no water could build up under the slab or against the wall that's not going to be picked up in the super sump. That's right, Joe. Now, obviously, in the uh, super sump, there's going to be a pump of some kind. But is this where the, uh, the line goes out, the discharge? Yeah, we've already run the discharge line, and we're going to pump the water well away from the house outside. All right. Now, sumps and super sumps. Tell me about your pumps. Okay. This is the pump that's going to go in the hole. This is the primary pump. Uh, it uh, runs off AC uh, power, and uh, it's a cast iron pump. It'll pump 2,600 gallons an hour. And it runs uh, automatically, turned on and off. There's nothing the homeowner has to do. So therefore, a uh, heck of a good quality unit there in a sump. Now, what happens in the event of a power outage? Well, uh, good question. And in, in this case, we are installing an ultra sump battery backup system 
uh, when the water rises above the point where the primary pump should normally turn on, it activates this switch, hey, good idea. which will turn on this pump, runs off a battery, which will uh, take over in the event of a, a power failure. There is an alarm that will sound off to tell the homeowner that, that they need to restore power to the primary pump uh, when this is operating. So therefore, in the event of any maintenance ever required on the, uh, the primary, then the emergency backup is there. That's right. This Excellent. is really the ultimate system. Now that is a slick system, mechanically fastened right to the wall. Now, what are you putting on there? What is this called, this material here? This is called bright wall paneling. Wow, it's neat. I mean, it's like a finished wall. It looks like leather. It's uh, about a sixteenth of an inch thick and it's, it's plastic. But what's its purpose? Well, the bright wall is to make the wall look a lot better, which uh, of course it does. But it directs any seepage that comes through the wall down into the water guard system. So everything that comes through that wall is going to be directed just like a gutter system or an eave trough system right to the uh, water guard. Right. Boy, down here, I can see what it's going to do here where this honeycomb uh, section is. You see the water actually coming through there right now. So it'll come in behind the, uh, the bright wall, down into the water guard, and away off she goes. That's right. Excellent. Now, you had another option that you put around the hot water tank, which was kind of neat. It's like a curb. Right. That's called flood ring. And flood ring is a uh, water containment system. In the event if, uh, the water heater ever leaks, it will contain all that water and drain it right into our water guard system. I see you put an actual drain in the floor and then took that drain right over to the water guard system, which again leads back to the sump. That's right. We found it was a very important uh, feature because a lot of people have uh, water heaters leaking over the years and it floods their basement from that source. Now, once that water goes into the sump, and the sump looks beautiful, finished, I might add, and all connected up now to go outside, and one last option you put outside is called the ice guard? Right. The ice guard is a special uh, fitting that ejects the water in the event that the discharge line freezes uh, so that uh, if it ever does freeze, the homeowner's basement doesn't flood for that reason. Absolutely great. Larry, you put it all into this system. I think the basement systems system has got to be one of the best. Thanks, Shell. You bet.